Hey everyone, it's Intel here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get combos in Minecraft PvP. So this is going to be a more basic tutorial for those of you guys who aren't good at PvP or don't know the PvP mechanics. Minecraft PvP isn't really all that intuitive, so it's really easy for newer players to get into the game and not really know what they're doing. And then they'll come across someone who destroys them, and it's really easy for them to get in the mindset that that player is cheating, even when they're doing something really simple that they could be doing, but they're not. So today, I'm going to be explaining some of the mechanics that you need to know in order to be successful in Minecraft PvP. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. Minecraft PvP is completely movement based. If you're going to take away anything from this video, know that everything when it comes to PvP has to do with either your movement or your opponent's movement. Every single combo that you get has to do with movement, either modifying your movement or the other player's movement. So in order to explain this a little more clearly, I'm on a server called PvP Land, and PvP Land has a bot system. So I'm going to be fighting the hard bot and note that the hard bot has 2.5 blocks of reach. The default reach in Minecraft is 3 blocks, so in theory I should have half a block more of reach than it. So I'm just going to start off by holding W and left clicking, and you can see for the most part we're just trading hits, and sometimes I'm going to be able to get an extra hit on it, which makes sense because I have an extra half a block of reach than it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let go of my W key and you can see almost immediately it's getting combos on me and I can't even touch it for the most part. Even with it having half a block less reach than me, when I'm not holding W, it's still able to combo me and that is because when you're not moving forward in Minecraft PvP, you're gonna get comboed. So once again, I'm gonna let go of my W key and you can see that it's almost consistently getting more hits than me. When you aren't moving forward in PvP, you're gonna get comboed and that's just how the game works. So now that you guys know that when you're not moving forward, you're gonna get comboed, we can actually take this and we can apply it to PvP scenarios. The most common way to do this is through projectiles, and with projectiles, you're able to temporarily stop someone's movement. So one of the most common ways to do this is through a rod in versions 1.7 and 1.8 combat, where even though a player is running towards you, you can temporarily stop their movement if you hit a rod on them. So if the person's running at you, you rod them, and right when they're frozen in that interval you go to attack them, then most of the times you're going to be able to get a combo on that player. So they're coming at you, you rod them, and you hit them while they're frozen. That's one way that you can start a combo really effectively. You aren't just limited to rods with this technique, you can pretty much use any projectile that deals knockback, such as snowballs. eggs, even a bow and arrow. There's other ways to stop someone's movement besides projectiles, for example, if you time a block just right, you can stop a player's movement that way and get a combo on them. If another player is in water, their movement is severely slowed and you'll be able to get a combo on them pretty easily. When your opponent is moving slower or not moving at all, it's easier to get a combo on them, but the inverse of that statement is also true, so if you're moving faster than your opponent, it should also be easier for you to get a combo on them. So having effects like speed really helps if you're trying to combo someone, because it just makes it a lot easier to get more hits on the other player. So once again to recap, if you aren't moving forward, it's going to be easier for your opponent to combo you. If you use projectiles such as rods, eggs, etc., you can temporarily stun another player's movement, which makes it easier to combo them. If you have speed, it's going to be easier for you to combo your opponent and harder for your opponent to combo you while you have speed. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about is knockback, and essentially in Minecraft PvP, the more knockback that you deal, the easier it is to get a combo, which is oftentimes why knockback is a more valued enchantment than sharpness. Now in PvP, there is actually a way to control the amount of knockback that you deal, and that is through sprint resetting. So before I talk about sprint resetting, I want to explain how knockback usually works. So if you start sprinting and you hit a player or a mob, your first hit will usually deal a lot of KB. However, if you don't let go of your W key and you keep on moving and you hit it again, you can see that that second hit was significantly less than the first hit in terms of KB. So once again, if I hit it while sprinting, it's going to move it a ton. However, if I don't let go of my W key and I go to hit it again, you can see that it barely moves it at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprint hit it, I'm going to hit it again, and I'm going to hit it one more time total of three hits, and this is the amount of knockback that it takes. So what sprint resetting is, is pretty self-explanatory. You are resetting your sprint in order to deal more KB to the player. Probably the most common method that you do this is through W tapping. For W tapping, all you're doing is you're sprinting, you're hitting it, you're letting go of your W key, and then you're starting your sprint again. 
So you're tapping it to make sure that you sprint resets and you deal more KB. So I'm gonna hit this zombie three times, but this time I'm going to W tap in between each hit. So we have our first hit, second hit, third hit. And you can see that in comparison from our first zombie where we didn't sprint reset at all, he traveled significantly farther. Now W tapping isn't the only way to sprint reset, there are other methods such as block hitting. So after your original first hit, all you do is block your sword and hit again, block your sword and hit again. And basically if we do that three times, you can see that it travels the exact same distance as the zombie we just W tapped on. You can also shift to sprint reset, so we're gonna hit this once, shift, hit again, shift, hit it again, and you can see that all these zombies travel the exact same distance. So it really doesn't matter how you sprint reset, but it really matters that you do it while you PvP because once again, dealing more knockback is gonna make it easier to get combos. There's also a way to time your sprint resets so that you can hold combos, so for whatever you're doing, W tapping, block hitting, S tapping, you basically wanna do it as soon as you hit the player or as soon as the player flashes red on your screen. It takes a while to get the timing right, but a great way to practice is by going on PvP land and fighting one of the easier bots. So I'm gonna choose the medium bot, I'm gonna go ahead and choose Gapple. And you wanna be able to hold the bot in a combo for as long as possible. So you can see at my keystrokes, I'm timing it just right so that I can hold pretty much combos for however long I want, no matter what method of sprint resetting that I'm doing. So right now I'm like, block hitting and S tapping at the same time and it's working pretty well. But once again, you wanna be able to time your sprint reset whenever the player, in this case the bot, turns red. And if you can indefinitely hold a combo, then you know you have the timings, right? So I highly recommend practicing with bo with bots until you can figure out the timing and then you can actually apply that with players. But anyways guys, it's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys were able to learn something when it comes to PvP. I really do think a problem with Minecraft PvP is that it's very intuitive and it took me a while to actually figure out these mechanics even though they're pretty simple the, the game doesn't really straightforward tell you what you need to do thank you guys so much for watching if you guys have any other tips you'd like to share please post them in the comments so other people can see them and with that being said i'll see you guys in the next video peace out